what I love doing most is really highlighting the businesses that are building in Ohio and growing out of Ohio. And so member companies that are startups in the ecosystem that are headquartered in Ohio particularly tend to be my favorite because it's a good example of not just here's the promise of this technology, but let me show you the people who are building them. And if you don't believe in the technology necessarily, I want to show you people that I believe in and people who are dedicating their lives, their careers to furthering these technologies. And to me, telling that type of story gets us outside of the, you know, well, I don't really understand what proof of work versus proof of stake means, or, you know, what is a blockchain exactly, which is a question we get all the time. Welcome back to the Compass Mining Podcast. I am Jared, and today I'm joined by Andrew Birchwell, who is the Executive Director of the Ohio Blockchain Council. Today, Andrew joins us to talk about all the great things that are going on in Ohio, as well as talk about his upcoming event, Amplify. Andrew, thanks for taking the time. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. Looking forward to this. Same. I am also looking forward to it. You know, when I before I have people on, I try to do as much homework as I can and really start to understand where people are in the space, what they've been doing and kind of where they're going. And if we could, I'd like to leave Amplify to the end of the episode, just because I know that that's something we definitely need to talk about. But if we can now, could you just introduce yourself for people who maybe don't know who you are and kind of talk a little bit about the work that you're currently doing in Ohio with the Ohio Blockchain Council? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm born and raised in Ohio. I've been here pretty much my whole life. And as somebody who really loves where I'm from, uh, it's been really useful and, and honestly quite meaningful for me to have uh, not only come from an energy background, started to work in Bitcoin mining, but to take on the challenge and I think the opportunity to create the Ohio Blockchain Council really based on the perspectives that we gained from other states who were doing this organization really well and advocating not only for our industry, but for their state and for both of those to come together. So for the last several years, we've really worked to try to make Ohio a leader, at least within the conversation of how do we develop further these ideas of a digital currency like Bitcoin, but also the hardware and infrastructure that sits behind it uh, in the Bitcoin mining space particularly, and then obviously the adjacencies that surround what we can do with the technology that is Bitcoin uh, primarily and really trying to take this idea forward to stakeholders within the state government, uh, economic development personnel, and, and really just companies who maybe didn't recognize Ohio as a great place to build that, hey, you should come here, you should do this here. Uh, Ohio should be a leading state for this industry, at least nationally, but we think globally just based on the energy resources that are available to us. And so really, it's just been telling that story for the last several years. And I think I've been very thankful that we've along the way developed a lot of partners and friends who at least liked to hear me tell the story but then i think came to ohio for various reasons and realized hey there is something really interesting here we should be looking at ohio in the broader region really is a developmental opportunity and so for the last two years we've just been able to through the ohio blockchain council tell that story really effectively yeah, thank you for that overview. And so you said the last two years, that means that the council started in 2022? It would have been 2021. We kicked off and we did our inaugural. Um, oh, actually, no, you're right. It is 2022. I'm losing track of time. So that would have been around, yeah, summertime of 2022. This will be our third yearly summit, right? So we're sort of two and a half years into that just based on the way things time out. And, you know, I think you can really recognize the timing of that from, let's say, the hype of the last bull market and the hype cycle that really occurred, which I think from a momentum perspective really spurred a lot of activity over the last two or three years just in the industry generally. Uh, but I think it was particularly noticing the moment that was occurring in Texas post Bitcoin mining exodus from China that really spurred a lot of this. And I think, you know, we just recognized at that time that, hey, Ohio should be part of that conversation. Yeah. And we've talked about this off mic, but you have a picture of a bear up behind you. If people are listening to the podcast platform, thank you. You'll, you'll have to go check out the, the YouTube video for this. But it's interesting that you talk about you started in 2022 because 2022, if you're new to Bitcoin or new to Bitcoin mining, was a time where sentiment changed. Uh, the roller coaster went back down. Prices really started to drop off. We also had massive events happen just in the space that were kind of not good for the space, right? And so I'm always interested by people who started to build in a, in a uh, bear market because I just think that they get to reap so many benefits of the bull market. And I always say too that every single bear market, you have 
amazing organizations and companies that come out of that because they kind of go away. They like a bear, they go into hibernation and they just work. They get head down and they're just focused on their craft, focused on making sure that their product or service is the best it can be. And I was looking on the website and I saw that I believe one of your partners or one of your sponsors is Coinbase. And, you know, Coinbase famously came out of a uh, bear market. Um, Brian Armstrong got some people together, got some money together. And now Coinbase is publicly traded, backs most of the ETFs. And I just think is, you know, whether you don't like Coinbase or not, whatever your opinions are, they're a company that's continuing to move forward and push crypto and Bitcoin forward, which is great. So kind of want to ask, since you've founded the council, what are the things as you've been hibernating and kind of, you know, head down, what are your biggest focuses uh, when it comes to providing probably, I would say, opportunities for your members, but just also for your partners? Yeah, and I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head, which is that there can be a lot of uh, noise that comes out of a, a bull market because, it, it you know, it, this is a zero interest rate phenomenon of sorts, right, which is that, Things are available in a way that maybe doesn't lend itself towards credibility or diligence or certain things that will eventually fall by the wayside. And also on the other side of that, I think, you know, uh, bear markets are for builders is sort of the mantra that gets us through a really tough winter, a really hard time. And so, you know, really thankful, honestly, for the opportunity for us to be able to get through what was a, a really, I think, just generally almost um, existential moment in the post FTX of it all and, and really seeing, you know, price action of Bitcoin and really the entire space uh, crater, you know, along with, you know, somewhat of the macro environment. And so from our perspective, I think one that sharpened our sword to be able to answer really tough questions up front, you know, and I can't tell you how many times when I try to go into a conversation with, let's say, a stakeholder who's not as familiar with their industry, uh, the first thing that they'll mention will be FTX, even, you know, one, two years later. Right. And so I think that, you know, is a good opportunity to talk about the differentiation between, you know, what is really going on with this technology and what is, you know, something that would be, you know, fraud in any other industry by any other means. Right. And so it, it allows you then, I think, to talk about the promise of the technologies. And when you have a willing participant who wants to listen to, hey, what can these technologies do? You know, I think we are not short on stories that we can tell about how, you know, Bitcoin, the currency can help us in an inflationary environment or, you know, even just a post scarcity environment where we have to really start thinking differently about money. My favorite topic, of course, is always coming back to Bitcoin mining. And I think that, you know, partially is my energy background, but partially I just think it's the part that most people miss. Uh, when somebody thinks about a digital asset, when they think about Bitcoin, they really don't quite understand what sits behind it. They don't understand how the hardware solutions incorporate into the energy systems and how they are a complement to each other and how that is a complement to development, generally speaking. And of course, Bitcoin mining is a very hard industry. And so it also just by its own nature separates wheat from chaff. And so I think that's true in, in a bull market, but especially true in the bear market. And even now where we're, we, we feel like maybe we're coming out of the, the hard bear times, right? Price isn't at $20,000, but if you're familiar, hash price is, you know, very difficult right now. And so I think that even further separates good business models from bad business models, but in the same way provides an opportunity to say, hey, the companies that are existing, like you use the example of Coinbase, but, you know, extrapolate that to the public mining companies that are still in existence and are thriving post, you know, difficult circumstance. I think that just adds to the credibility of our industry to be able to say, look, we are not a flash in the pan. We are not fly by night operations. We are here for the long term and we are building for resiliency. And I think that's a story that I'm really eager to continue telling to the state, to the state stakeholders and to people who should want more of this in our state. Yeah, I was just on an X space probably 25 minutes before we hopped on here to record with, it was led by Bitcoin Amsterdam, because they're both going to be, uh, the two speakers are going to, the two guests are going to be at Bitcoin Amsterdam, but it was Amanda Fabiano and Anthony Power. And it was an amazing conversation about, I guess the theme could be the resiliency of the pubcos right now in the overall industry, because as you said, where hash price is right now, it's nothing exciting, right? There's nothing exciting about it. Most people are operating at a loss and we're really starting to see you know, who's, who's going to stay in the game. I'm not too worried about it. I do think that hash price will recover over the next 90 days or so. We have the employment, uh, was it the, the jobs numbers coming out soon? And then, you know, the fed may or may not decide to cut some basis points. If you look online, you can look at the bets. Is it going to be 25 basis points, 50 basis points, 75 basis points. 
in the world we live in, everything is uh, unfortunately still tied to that. And so that will impact sentiment around Bitcoin and hopefully see the price start to appreciate and alleviate some of the real world stresses and pains that miners are feeling right now. And obviously here we are, you know, Compass Mining, we we totally feel the same way, or I guess I should say I feel the same way. I don't want to speak for the company or, or everyone else, but I feel the same way in, in the sentiment that you shared about, hey, you know, sometimes people forget about Bitcoin mining because I always feel like we're the elephant in the room, but no one like talks about us. They just assume it's like, do they think Bitcoin is proof of stake? How do they think that this works? So when it comes to that, looking at the Ohio landscape, how much of your work is supporting Bitcoin miners, whether that's pubcos, whether that's private companies or whether that's just a home miner who, I don't know, needs some help to pass some local legislation and you guys can step in and uh, lend a hand. Sure. Percentage wise, it's hard to say. I would say for me, it's of primary importance as a topic. And really, we dedicated ourselves to that broad theme when we founded Ohio Blockchain Council. And my reasoning for that was that, you know, when we're trying to articulate uh, to people who have no idea what this industry is about, what digital currencies are about, you know, to say nothing of the mining or anything adjacent to it, um, in order to get them to care at a broad scale about uh, taking this on from a state level, they need something that they can sink their teeth into immediately and something that is tangible. And for me, that has always been Bitcoin mining because they can see it. They can feel the hot air coming off of the hot aisle. Right. And, I, you know, we do live in a world where that is still very important. And as much as the digital is inherently part of what we're building here, that is intangible. That is very hard to grasp, quite literally. And, I, you know, I would be lying if I said I haven't had people ask me, you know, well, how do you know where to mine for the Bitcoin, right? So the, the disconnect in terms of just the technology of it is very real. And so for me, the tangibility of Bitcoin mining and the broad scale of the economic activity that's associated with it, right? What does it mean to come in and build a 500 megawatt facility within a single state on a single site, right? Something that we've seen examples of in other states and something that we will now see in our state. But, you know, two years ago and really leading up to this moment, it was trying to communicate the large scale benefit of this economic activity. And that for me was Bitcoin mining. And so we spend a fair bit of time really talking about that, really working with miners and adjacent partners who develop Bitcoin mining as a primary focus. Again, it's not exclusively what we deal with, but I think that you can see why, you know, that's significantly important to us right now in this moment. Other things that we would work on, would be, you know, ancillary, uh, let's say, pieces of legislation within state level bills or, you know, whether it's a community level town hall engagement to really get people to recognize why the digital side of things is still fundamentally important. Right now, we have a bill that was introduced in the Ohio House that, among other things, instantiates a right to self-custody digital assets, broadly speaking. And for me, that's extremely important uh, because obviously that's inherent in what we think the promise of a technology like Bitcoin can offer. But really, I think it's a fundamental constitutional uh, liberty that should be available to us in a new era of digital technologies, which is that we should have the right to own property, period, uh, whether that property is physical and tangible or digital and you know stored on a, a key base somewhere. And so I think that that's the type of thing that we want to continue to focus on. I think we're less about, you know, trying to get people to pick a favorite in terms of which digital asset is going to be the best investment. That's really not what we spend our time doing. What I love doing most is really highlighting the businesses that are building in Ohio and growing out of Ohio. And so member companies that are startups in the ecosystem that are headquartered in Ohio particularly tend to be my favorite because it's a good example of not just here's the promise of this technology, but let me show you the people who are building them. And if you don't believe in the technology necessarily, I want to show you people that I believe in and people who are dedicating their lives, their careers to furthering these technologies. And to me, telling that type of story gets us outside of the, you know, well, I don't really understand what proof of work versus proof of stake means or, you know, what is a blockchain exactly, which is a question we get all the time. Uh, let me show you the builders. Let me show you what they think they're building. The technology is just a means to do that. At the end of the day, you know, Bitcoin is a means to do economy better. It's a means to build community better. And at the end of the day, that's actually more important to me than the thing itself. 
Yeah, it's totally a medium to do things in a different way and maybe a better way. So I love that you called that out. And would you mind highlighting some of the companies or businesses? And I know this is like saying which of your children is maybe your favorite because we're on the air here. But sure. would you mind, you know, calling out something that is, as you said, Bitcoin mining is an easy, tangible thing for people to kind of wrap their head around. OK, we're putting yeah. energy into the ledger and we're getting out this, you know, this new asset. Um Please share, share, share something that's going on in Ohio that people who maybe are outside of Ohio don't know uh, is happening. Well, I think one of the greatest things we have uh, to our advantage right now is having a world class Bitcoin only company being headquartered in Ohio. And I'm speaking of River, formerly River Financial, uh, posting up shop in downtown Columbus and really recognizing the potential of a city like Columbus to be kind of in that next wave of technology and financial infrastructure development has been something that uh, I think they're world-class. I think they're one of the best in the business. I think they have a great team, some of my favorite people. And so for me, being able to go just a few miles down the street and be at their headquarters is always a benefit and I'm supremely excited about that. Uh, one of the other ones that I'm particularly fond of is a team called Sonoda, and they're based out of Columbus, Ohio as well. They're a founding team that incorporates a brother-sister pair, two of my favorite people, Lisa and Austin. And what they're building is essentially a way to utilize the Bitcoin network and the Lightning network, essentially to settle energy transactions in real time or, you know, any time scale you might be able to choose instead of the typical 30, 60, 90 day uh, monthly arbitrage of, you know, basically consumption versus payment, which, you know, I think speaks to the broad promise of the technology of digital currencies in general, but particularly something like Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, which is to say when you are able to settle transactions much closer together from that initial request to the initial or the final settlement, uh, you actually end up freeing up a lot of capital in the process. And I think that efficiency that they're building for energy companies, for Bitcoin miners, for pretty much anybody who can use energy down the line is going to create an opportunity to free up capital to allow us to do other things with that capital that I think is a, really a global game changer and really under-recognized in terms of its potential. But I, I think that does speak to the moment of why digital assets in general are going to be the way forward. So two of my favorites, both Columbus based where I'm based here. And obviously, you know, we have other companies that are headquartered in Ohio that I think are, are worth mentioning. And one formerly grid was technically a Cincinnati company, a Bitcoin mining company based out of Cincinnati. Some of my favorite people as well. Uh, the network firm, one of their founders, Nick Ward, based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Again, we just have I think Ohio has always had the spirit of innovation, manufacturing of development. And, you know, I think it's no different in the digital age. I just think it. it you know, colloquially, we like to say that we don't love to be first, but we're happy to be second. And I think that's kind of the moment we're at where we're noticing the moment and we're really taking the moment for ourselves and becoming a leader in the, the innovation space. Yeah, we actually just had, um, I think we published this yesterday, actually. I know people will be listening to this in a week from now almost, but we had Nick and Noah from the network firm on and it was really insightful and it made me really start to think about my own bag and my own kind of the way I'm dealing with digital assets. And I was like, wow, I need to step my game up. Um, if you're into uh, learning about, well, if you're mining, definitely please go ahead. I'm going to leave that link below because I think everyone needs to listen to that because the tax implications of mining are very interesting. So you definitely want to check that out. And yeah, I didn't know that Nick was out of Ohio until I saw that the network firm was one of the um, members or partners, I believe, on the website. So that's really cool. And you also called out Cincinnati. And I want to shout out Cincinnati because I was just in Cincinnati maybe 10 days ago because uh, Compass has one of our facilities in, in that area, in that region. And I was able to go see it. So Bitcoin mining is definitely alive and well in Ohio. And as far as, you know, looking at the landscape of the United States, I think when I spoke with Lee Bratcher, he had said like 40 percent of hash. And this is what we get from really the public mining information. The pubcos is in Texas. Do you have any idea how much percent of exahash is like stateside is in Ohio or, you know, what that landscape looks like? Because actually the story in my head is Ohio is one of the biggest places stateside for uh, for Bitcoin mining. Yeah, percentage wise, I'm not sure where we're at today. I know I think we're in the top 10 in terms of states in just terms of uh, current hash rate. Um, what I can tell you is that um, in terms of moving forward, the developmental pathway that exists within Ohio, we have, you know, I would say one and a half, maybe two gigawatts of development potential on the way. And so I would say currently we're not sitting in the top three, right? I think Texas, 
Georgia, even Washington state still is one of those states that, um, you know, really is going to stay at the front just based on, you know, momentum and where they started. Uh, but we have some significant developmental activities that are coming to the state of Ohio. Most notably, Bitdeer has made several announcements within the states in terms of very sizable facilities. That's all uh, sort of publicly announced. And so I think from that perspective, in what we fully expected was that the growth curve would catch up and that sooner or later people would start to recognize the potential of, you know, the PJM capacity market, but also the underutilized energy infrastructure that is sitting here and already existing to be utilized for Bitcoin mining. So, you know, we're, we're not top three yet, but I every once in a while I kind of, you know, elbow Lee a little bit and say we're coming for you. But, you know, I don't I don't know that anybody ever catches Texas at that point. That's just Texas being Texas, but we're certainly on our way. Yeah, I think catching Texas is tough in almost anything, uh, their size and just the sheer volume of everything that they do. I remember growing up playing high school and I grew up in Massachusetts. We had a soccer team. We we're like, oh, you know, we're top whatever in Texas. And excuse me, top whatever in Massachusetts, maybe top five or whatever at that moment. I think in 18 games, we only let in two goals, which is ridiculous. And we were just like had to humble ourselves because we realized in Texas there was probably 30 teams that would kill us. Right. So Texas is always kind of a, you know, uh, it is the elephant in the room, especially when it comes to Bitcoin mining. Let's shift gears a little bit because I want to talk about Amplify. And sure. the way I want to kick this off is I want to talk about your 2023 numbers and then see where we're going. So I was on the website and I saw a really good promo video about Amplify in 2023. I, I also love that it's just a day. I think that that's great. Uh, as someone who's now gone to a good amount of conferences, they're really tiring. And I really think I'm best on day one. If it's like the Tour de France, maybe I show up with more energy on day one than day three because it's just, you know, it's it's a marathon. So it said uh, Amplify 2023, 125 attendees, 16 speakers, 88 companies, nine states were probably present there. And I don't know if you need to look up stats. I'm kind of putting you on the uh, spot here. But as Amplify nears, are we looking at more attendees? Uh, what what should people be expecting this year? More speakers, uh, more companies, you know, more networking opportunities. Uh, is there going to be you know something outside of the? Uh, I, I know, for example, at Permissionless, they're going to have a pickleball tournament. You know, what should people be expecting from Amplify this year? Yeah, and you know, we were really thankful last year. It was a pretty tough market, and we were still able to grow from year one, which for me was really important just to not only show progress, but to recognize that there are still a contingent of people that will show up when conditions are tough because they're thinking for the long term. And so, you know, if I look at total number of attendees from last year, my hope is to grow that a little bit more this year and be towards the 150 person mark. Uh, the thing about it, and I really appreciate you saying that about the one day of it, I fully agree with you. There are too many times where I'm at a conference and I've already had all the conversations I need to have at a really full day one. And then day two, you're just kind of like, well, you know, I'm here, so I might as well figure something out, but there's not a whole lot left to do. And to be frank, and I recognize this in my personal life, and I really just am trying to be there for the people that I know and care about that have kids, they have a family, and they want to get back home to their family. And there's no reason for me to keep you in Ohio for more than that day. So I like to keep it to a day for that reason. But also, I like that it's an intimate setting of, you know, not 500 people, for instance. I think there are other conferences that do that really well. Looking forward to the North American Blockchain Summit that Texas and others put on, you know, in the November timeframe. For us, uh, one solid day of uh, networking. And we're really excited this year that we have more sponsors than we've ever had before. We have a fuller list of participant companies that are building in the space than we've ever had before. And so I think the networking opportunities are just continuing to increase. I really like that people are able to get together and kind of have these informal conversations. I think that's really what the meat of these conferences are about. And then really actually, interestingly, um, we're more focused this year on our panel topics, whereas before we may have gone wide on community development or some other aspects of the you know, general digital asset space. This year, we're very focused on energy, building infrastructure, Bitcoin mining and anything adjacent, whether it's software platforms or otherwise that are focused on that particular niche. So I, I really wanted to focus the topic on that this year, a little less uh, politic and policy as well. So really, this is a conference for builders. This is a conference for people who are looking for partners within the region who want to come to Ohio and see what's going on here. Uh, because really, I mentioned the developmental roadmap that's sort of coming for Ohio, but there's still so much more that's available. There's still so much more that we can do. And I think that's really the mission for me of this day is get the right people 
in the room, talking about the right things at the right time so that we can be ready for the next year or two of development. And so that includes Bitcoin mining, but really I want it to include the energy, the power generation side of this as well, and how we do all of this in tandem because Bitcoin mining will survive and thrive and be a benefit to the world if it can figure out how to best assimilate into the broader energy systems that power everything, right? It isn't just that we're using this for our own gain, for our industry's gain. Let's be a complement to energy systems, to power systems, to the grid at large, so that when we get into these challenging times, which I think everybody can recognize, there's a real constraint coming in terms of energy, power resources, just you know, availability of electrons, period. And so if we can show that we're a complement to the build out of the next generation of generation, it's gonna to be to our interest. And those are the types of conversations I'm interested in having. That's why I like getting everybody here. And just to be frank, and as somebody who's from Columbus, I just like bringing people to town. And I like when they leave, they say, you know, Columbus was a lot more fun than I expected, right? That's that's something that's personally meaningful for me too. So it's why I do it this time of year as well. It's the most beautiful time of year. It's not too hot. Leaves are changing. It's a beautiful time. So yeah, I would encourage everybody to look into the Amplify Conference. Come in for a great day in Columbus. We've got a lot of friends and partners that are going to be here. And I think it's going to be a fun day. Could you uh, share, if you could, kind of like the menu of what people can expect? You've talked about having more specificity around the panels as opposed to just being like Bitcoin mining, community development, job creation, energy. Uh, Could you talk, especially for the Bitcoin miners out there, what they could be expecting and maybe some of the things, some of the innovations that are happening also, if you want to lead into this, that are also happening in Ohio that you're really excited about that may be part of the panels or discussed at Amplify. Yeah, <clears throat> I think there are a couple of ways to think about that in terms of specificity. The first one that's really interesting to me is this co-location behind the meter development of power resources. And I think that this is a sticky topic because ultimately the dividing line on these things can be geographically distinct, and it can also be based on who the utility is that's within the region you're trying to build these things, right? And so we see all these benefits from co-location and behind the meter utilization of power uh, from Bitcoin miners, from data centers generally, really, you know, other types of manufacturing as well. Uh, But how do you build those systems well and how do you build them in tandem? And especially, like I said, when we're in a generation crisis, we're going to need to build as much generation as we possibly can, as quickly as possible. And that's to the benefit of our industry to recognize that we can actually aid that process, not hinder it. And so a conversation around behind the meter energy generation and the infrastructure co-location that can spur that development is one of the more interesting topics I'm looking forward to leaning in on. And on the other side of that, I think, you know, we already mentioned Sonoda. I think they're a great example of the software platforms that we integrate into our energy, our hardware systems to create efficiencies, to create abilities for us to be flexible and agile in ways that perhaps no large load consumer has ever been able to do before, right? So we're, we're excited to feature the Sonotas and the Foremans of the world. Um, I think another interesting sort of software product that incorporates into this broader game are the hash rate derivatives that our friends at Luxor and others are now developing. And so really eager to get Matt Williams on to uh, speak about the products that they're developing there. So, you know, I think between the two, you kind of get both ends of the spectrum of the really nitty gritty, fine detail of the infrastructure and the hardware, and then all the way at the other end of how does the software incorporate the digital asset and the currency aspect of Bitcoin to create the efficiencies within these systems. And then I think in the middle of that, it really is just a matter of, you know, how can you build facilities more effectively in an environment of constraint and whether that's access to on-grid power or whether that's simply supply chain issues that we deal with, whether on the ASIC side or, you know, probably more importantly on the transformer slash substation side of things. And then, you know, how do we have a meaningful conversation about how to build new power generation facilities in general? So all of those topics really excited to dig into. I think we've got some of the best subject matter experts in the industry talking about these things. And again, you know, happy to just bring my friends to Columbus for a really meaningful day. Uh, I'll admit I've never been to Columbus, but CJ, our chief revenue officer is out of Columbus and I'm sure I need to visit Columbus now. And maybe, I don't think I'm going to be able to make this year's Amplify, but it sounds like something I probably need to check out in the future because I think 
as Bitcoin grows and as Bitcoin mining grows and as blockchain just as a as an idea, you know, you, you talked about when we first hopped on here, it's a narrative and it's a story and that's all the business is. Honestly, it's a, does this narrative like align with you and does it make sense? And then are you going to invest in it? And so I, I definitely need to get out to Columbus. And before I give you the opportunity to shout out where people can find out more information on Amplify and everything that has to do with the Ohio blockchain council, I want to ask you to, uh, try your best here and putting you in the hot seat. And what I want to ask is, well, let's say you and I meet and we're in the elevator and we have about 45 seconds and I'm a Bitcoin miner and I'm mining at home. I have 10 ASICs or something going in a shed because I've got cheap power, whatever it is. And we're talking and you tell me you're with a Ohio blockchain council. Can you sell me on why I should be a member or why maybe, you know, I have my LLC or why my company would want to partner with you and just kind of make that plea? Because I'm sure that there are people who are going to be hearing this from the Ohio area, if not directly in Ohio, maybe around it, who may want to start getting closer to the fire, if that makes sense of what you guys are up to. Yeah, I would say in general, our pitch has always been, we are stronger together. And I think this is something we've recognized, you know, in the middle of a public utilities commission process against a major utility, for instance, taking that fight on as an individual company can be very difficult and very expensive. A consortium of aligned interests is always going to be to the benefit of all of the interests that are involved. And so be part of a movement of companies who are recognizing that Ohio is at the forefront of industry development, but that we can't do this alone. So I think for me, it's bringing people into the fold who are recognizing that story of collaborative potential, which I think is in the spirit of Bitcoin in general, but really coming into an established entity that has ties to the business and the political community that means that you don't have to start that process from scratch, nor do you have to fight this fight alone, whether that's, you know, a uh, right to self custody, whether that's a local tax issue, whether that's a, a customer service delivery uh, tariff issue with major public utilities, right? I think that this is something that we would all benefit from actually aligning forces on. And I think it's something this industry really can say it does really well. So we're just, we're part of that cause and obviously looking for any willing members who are, are looking to participate in the great state of Ohio. That was excellent. That was excellent. And now if you could, could you share where people listening can find more information? You've got a great website and uh, I believe you're probably on X and probably on LinkedIn as well. So please go ahead and share where people can get in touch. And maybe if you want to share where they can get in touch with you personally, I know you and I recently connected on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn is an easy way to find myself and also the Blockchain Council. You can go to www.ohioblockchain.org to find more information on our website. You can find me on Twitter at Andrew Birchwell and at OH Blockchain for the council itself. And yeah, easy to reach on Twitter, uh, you know, pretty readily every day. And so I think anybody that wants to meet me can reach out, obviously, uh, whether it's online or if you happen to be in the state, we'd love to grab coffee with you as well. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask if they want to find out more information on Amplify. Is that also on the website? Yeah, you can go to the website. Uh, we have an event link that you can find circulating on social media as well. And yeah, pretty much tickets are available now through October 3rd. And we hope to see everybody in Columbus, Ohio. Well, thank you so much for hopping on, Andrew. This has been wonderful. And like I said, now I have... Another reason to definitely go and check out Columbus because it seems like a lot of stuff is going on there. Uh, the Columbus Bitcoin meetup also seems to be something that's, you know, they're they're moving, they're growing. It's exciting to see. Um, yeah. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening or watching this, I should say on YouTube, subscribe. Make sure to follow Compass Mining on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. And Andrew, thank you so much for hopping on the pod. And um, I look forward to getting out to Columbus someday. Yeah, thank you. Great talking with you today.